but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. That the aged men, why they're to be an example. To be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, in patience. To age women likewise, that they be in behavior as becometh holiness. As becometh holiness. Well, that was the aged women. Not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young. So the young ones didn't get off the hook. The older women are supposed to be this way so they can teach the younger women. Teach them what? They may teach the younger women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. Well, we could use some of that in the day that we're living in. To be discreet. Translation there, sensible. Boy, we could use some of that too. Not only in the women, but the men too. To be discreet, to be sensible. Chaste. Keepers at home. Good. Obedient to their own husbands. That the word of God be not blasphemed. So we're not talking about. I'm, I'm reading this straight from the word of God. We're not talking about some doctrine. We're not talking about some man's doctrine or some church doctrine. We're talking about the word of God. What is this for? It's for the glory of God. That's what it's all about. That's what we got to remember. We get in traditions and things and push that. We end up doing that for the glory of man. And that's what Paul come against. Even as to, as he said, to the circumcision. Or those of the Jewish people. Or those that are religious. That was the ones that was causing Jesus the problem all the time. And evidently Paul was having his share of it too. And he began to address it. Hope y'all don't mind the commentary. <laughs> Young men, likewise, exhort to be sober minded. You urge, what is that sober mind? Self control. Self control. In all things, showing thyself a pattern of good works. In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity. I see here soundness and seriousness. You need to be sober minded, you need to be sincere. Don't mean we have to go around looking like we suck the lemon all the time. You know, sometimes we, we feel like it. Brother Frank used to say, we look like we come from 11 funerals or something, you know. I mean, every morning, you know, we feel like to be godly, we got to look like we lost our best friend, you know. When in our reality, if you have Jesus... See, what is it? People that follow the doctrine after the Spirit, you realize the world around you. You become aware of the world around you. You realize that people are lost. You realize that there are demon powers and spirits. 
And people are taken into captivity at the will of Satan. And you see that and you're grieved. There's a part, it's just like the men of God, there's a part of them that's grieved because you see sin and, and you see people just going on just as hard as they can go after the lust of the flesh and the things of this world. And, and it grieves. But far as that their walk with Christ, you have a burden for the world, but then but there's a joy, there's a peace. Sometimes it maybe ain't as jubilant. But like I said, we don't have to go around with a long face. We should be happy. That's why I say when, when people ask, how you doing? How, how's your day? How, how you been doing? We shouldn't. You know, I, I used to be bad about it while I'm making it. Quit saying that. If you're a child of God, you're doing better than just making it. You've done made it. But what if I ain't having a great day? The Bible said, call them things that are as though they are not. When I get up in the morning, it feels like the devil's beating my brains out, as Mike Bradley used to say. I can still, through the word of God, I can still declare, I'm doing great. And you know, if we could really see what's happening, we're probably doing better at that time than we are at the other times when we think we're doing good. When we think we're doing good, we're not doing as good as we ought to. But when, you know, it feels like we just can't take it, then the devil's fighting. That might be a good time. That might be a time that we know you know, if we was looking at it, God saying, hey, why? Because you made the devil mad. You made him mad. All right. <laughs> Sound like I got an echo. <laughs> we got to endure sound doctrine. Sound speech. Exhort servants. To be obedient unto their own masters. And to please them well in all things, not answering again. Not prolonging, but showing all good fidelity. That they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. And I don't have to dwell on that very long. But you've all been on the job. You know, we like, we like to think about that. Well, I'm not a servant. You hire out someone, you're their servant. You agree to be their servant for $15 or $20 an hour, or $30 an hour, whatever it may be, and you're obligated to do what they tell you to do. And don't do it with grumbling and complaining the whole way. How many times you hear people, yeah, we out here slaving the man, he's making a killing. Do all things as unto the Lord. We've all been on that job and heard that. Be content. Or either get another job. It's simple. For the grace of God that... See, why do we do those things? It's to bring glory to God. He said, even if you're married to it, you find yourself in a situation, you're married to an unbeliever, you come to Christ. He said, keep your chaste conversation whereby you might win that other person to Christ. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us, that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glory appearing, glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous 
of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Teaching. This is why I say, let's lay something out here to where you, when you're faced with the situation, when you're going to do something, you're going to go someplace, you're going to participate in something, you judge according to the word of God. 